welcome to Dialogues, and today we are speaking to Bharti Singla of Chakra Innovation. Bharti, we need more like you. Climate action and environmental sustainability is need of the hour. Tell us how your technology is helping us get cleaner air. Thank you, Bushra. It's an honor to be here. Uh, so we at Chakra Innovation have been developing technologies to control air pollution. Our first product is called Chakra Shield, which fits on top of diesel engines. and it reduces 70 to 90% of the smoke the black smoke which causes pollution which is coming out of the diesel engines so it's curbing the pollution at the source uh, we've recently developed one more product which is an energy storage system which can eliminate the need for diesel engines uh, it's a novel aluminium based energy storage system uh, it's yet to be commercialized but again this will completely revolutionize the need for uh, uh, fossil replace it with renewable energy stored in batteries so what is your plan to accelerate the commercialization of uh, this technology sure sure uh, so our technology uh, we, you know we've been working on this uh, for the last 6 years and over the last 3 years we've actually been commercializing it and scaling it up currently in india we have over 300 installations uh, and we've been working with large corporates uh, So our idea to take it to scale is to, you know, first of all bring the cost down for the product, uh, and as we achieve economies of scale, the cost will start coming down so that it can become affordable for the MSMEs. I believe that the government will also eventually have a role to play in this, you know, with the introduction of subsidies or, uh, you know, any kind of incentives for people to reduce pollution. Uh, so that will also help uh, scale the technology further. So I, I mean, it. while we are already working on it i think as we achieve economies of scale we'll be able to further enhance this uh, okay so you know talking about uh, scaling uh, the technology so as you go out in the market do you see acceptance from industries from big corporates to buy the technology and install them uh, acceptance from the government what has been the response like so uh, you know uh, contrary to what most people might think uh, most industries are actually willing uh, to take action i think everyone recognizes the problem of both air pollution and climate change now and they are all looking for a solution uh, so our experience especially with some uh, companies like tatas and uh, hpcl iocl etc who were our early adopters has been great because they were willing to uh, pay for the technology even when there, when there was no regulation recently the indian government has taken cognizance of the fact that there is uh, pollution being caused by diesel engine and they have come up with regulations which now require all industries to actually have some emission control technology on the diesel engines and that's further driving the uh, demand for our product and now all industries whether they want to or not have to eventually uh, Actually, this is uh, you know I I don't like to call it women entrepreneurs because women entrepreneurs are just entrepreneurs, right? But it is true that you see much smaller group of women, uh, especially in the tech sector. Why do you think that uh, is the case, and do you see that changing? Sure. So I I think I really like the fact that you said that we're just entrepreneurs. We happen to be women, uh, but yes, uh, entrepreneurs who happen to be women are fewer, and there are fewer. women in leadership roles also across the industry especially when it comes to hardware right that's uh, somewhere where uh, we still have to uh, get our critical mass for for uh, things to get rolling i believe that uh, you know at an entry level uh, when we look at colleges um, there are far fewer women in these um, you know departments but that is changing i think people are now going after their passion and that's changing but as you go up the ladder uh, you know there are a lot of dropouts uh, for for various reasons maybe they decide not to continue working or they decide to shift their fields because they don't see uh, a path up there mm -hmm. so i think it is changing but it's not changing at the pace at which, at which it needs to so there will have to be some societal changes which will bring about a faster transition to having more diversity across uh, Yeah, we hope that will happen soon enough. Uh, so, uh, Bharti, you have been associated with Tidal E N C R for some time now. Tell us how this has helped you in your entrepreneurial journey. Sure. Uh, I think I think uh, working with Tai uh, and Tidal E N C R chapter in particular has been extremely helpful. So, I think first I would say is the access to the network of mentors we've been able to get. I think that's most critical for any entrepreneur. 
you know, everything else still gets figured out, but finding the right set of mentors is something which is very important. And that's something Tidally NCR has been very helpful, um, you know, for us. Uh, second is obviously, you know, general networking, not just with uh, investors, but also with peer uh, groups. So I think uh, through all the awards and the meetups, etc., I've been able to meet a lot of entrepreneurs. And, you know, when you meet entrepreneurs who are going through uh, the similar journey as you, you get to really uh, share uh, your your pain and maybe learn from them. And that's also very important. You know, it's, it's a hard journey. So having people who you can relate to, who you can discuss your problems with uh, really helps a lot. So I think these two things have been uh, the most critical influence of Tidally and CRM in our lives. Thank you so much, Bharti. Thanks a lot. It was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank, thank you, Bhushra. The pleasure was all mine.